Hey everybody. Okay, so this video is a deep dive on um, viruses, essential oils, aromatherapy, and what we can do and what we can't do um, in the wake of a crisis such as what we're going through right now. And there's a lot of concerns about the coronavirus, a lot of questions on what can be done and what um, can't be done with essential oils. So when I put my microphone in here. So uh, some of you heard this video or similar version of this video um, on Facebook. And so this one that I'm doing today was designed to be a deep dive. We're gonna go all in on everything. We're gonna talk about science. We're gonna do the recipes together. We're gonna do all of it. And this was designed only for my program members. So for you guys who are my program members, you are gonna have this video, like I promised you, full throttle everything in your teachable classroom. And you know, you have that for life. As long as you remember, it's there and you have that forever. For those of you, I decided to make it available for the public for a couple of reasons. I had to redo what's on Facebook, what's currently on Facebook right now. I'm going to have to take that down and put another one up because we had some technical stuff that I couldn't fix. So I was like, since I have to re record this anyway, I'm just going to make it available to everybody. The difference is the public, this is going to be available to you for the next 72 hours. So the next 72 hours, this video will be available and then I'm going to take it down so that it's only available to the program members. It's only fair because you guys should get extra stuff. And usually you don't, uh, the public doesn't get this deep a dive into stuff, but this is an important subject. Got a lot of questions about it. People are interested in it and I want to be able to provide it. And again, since we have to re-record anyway, so we're doing that. All right, so the first thing that I want to do is just to have, um, I'm going to give you an overview of what we're going to do um, and what's great about this, once it's all edited and everything, you'll see, like I'll put the words in for what section we're on. That way you can forward to the part of the video that you're particular, particularly interested in. So here's the overview. I'm gonna do um, a hand sanitizer. We're gonna do the whole thing together. Um, I am going to do a hand soap with you. We're gonna do the whole thing together. Um, while we do that, I plan to tell you some alternative oils. I'm going to be using one set of oils and I plan to tell you some, some alternative oils. If I forget to speak it, it'll be in writing because I'll be able to go back and edit this and everything. So you'll see in, on your screen some alternatives. Okay, so we're going to do hand sanitizer. We're going to do a hand soap. We're going to talk about an immune boosting inhaler and um, in connection with emotional support inhaler. So I'm gonna put, do just three items. We're gonna do the whole thing together. But when we do the immune boosting, I'm gonna add the emotional support in there, but actually it's gonna be in these first two as well. So I'm gonna talk to you about that as we go through it. Once we're done with the actual, and I'm gonna to try to incorporate um, a lot of the chemistry and stuff like that as we go along. But when we're finished, I'm going to really kind of go over um, in detail uh, each oil and you should see some of that on your screen too um, what the constituents are that we're looking for and what the properties are okay so I'm gonna that's the the, the, the four things we're gonna accomplish together all right so let's go over them hand sanitizer hand soap immune and emotional support boost and the chemistry of the oils and so before we start all that number five I'm actually gonna do first and this portion is really important because I just want to kind of clearly state what essential oils, what's the difference, first of all, when we talk about chemical, component, chemical component, components, if I can talk, chemical components and constituents, um, essential oils, aromatherapy, what's the difference in that? Okay, so chemical constituents or components is what the essential oils is made up of. So if we say clove oil, what's active that we're gonna be talking about today in clove oil is a, a chemical component or constituent, you can use either word, uh, called eugenol. The eugenol is what is really the active ingredient. So once the essential oil clove gets into your bloodstream, it's the eugenol that's actually acting. So as we go through, we're gonna be talking about antibacterial um, uh, components, antiviral, antimicrobial, 
And we'll be using the essential oil name, but what I want you to know and remember that really it's the chemical component that is causing the, the effect of the antiviral, the antibacterial, does that make sense? So you've got the plant that's got a lot of different chemical components in there, right? And then there's different percentages of those chemical components. And each component does a different thing. And um, so what we're looking at is finding certain um, oils that have typically a higher percentage of certain oils. In particular, today we're gonna to be working with eugenol and terpenine for all and apinine and delimonene. Those are some of the ones that we'll be kind of focusing on. And we'll be using mostly the essential oil names, all right? So that's something that I wanted to kind of clear up. So that is the, the chemical components make up the essential oil. The aromatherapy is using that oil for therapy. So say you have a bottle of oil, and I, I cover my names because this is not about brands. Um, it's about, and, and to just cover that, you wanna make sure that you're using uh, essential oils that are organic or wild harvested, that you know some history on it. Either you can get your hands on the GCMS report or you, you have like the seed to seal promise that some of the, the oils have that you can know where your oils come from, okay? But anytime we're talking about using it as therapy, we can't talk about the brand name. So that's why you see me just kind of showing you bottles, okay? So aromatherapy is actually using these essential oils for a therapeutic benefit. So you can have essential oils that you just, you know, you're not really like kind of, you grabbed it off the shelf and you don't really know what's in it and it, what kind of grade it is. And you just use it because it smells good or you use it for um, just relaxing and you use it to fill up the house with a good smell. That's not really aromatherapy. It's called aromatherapy. A lot, a lot of times people will put um, marketings like, oh, aromatherapy, just smell and relax. But aromatherapy is actually um, a, the therapeutic use of essential oils in a, a holistic way where you're actually nourishing um, the body and the mind. All right. So that's what I do. And so this is a perfect time to say, for those who don't know me, my name is Renee Hughes. I am a certified level two professional aromatherapist, and I'm also a certified natural health consultant. And so I have a holistic practice and an online school where I teach clients and students how to use aromatherapy, aromatherapy safely and effectively. I want you to get the maximum benefit and um, to do so safely and in the best way. So that's my job, that's what I do. And so today we're gonna to be going over all that stuff. So now I'm gonna go into answering the question when it comes to viruses, like the one that we're facing right now, um, what can essential oils do and what can it not do? So the first thing to know is that essential oils and aromatherapy, we can't say that it, it um, treats or prevents a thing, not one single thing. So if you read online that, oh my goodness, you just use this blend and it's gonna cure that, or you use that and it's gonna cure that, we're not allowed to say that because for the most part, those things haven't been proven. And another thing is a lot of times they're not true. So the way that I teach aromatherapy is um, what happens when those chemical constituents gets in, get into your body they help your immune system to do what it was designed to do. The idea behind plant-based remedies and therapies are typically that, to help your body do what it was supposed to, what it's supposed to do. So the body is already designed to uh, fight against viruses when it's being attacked. And this is why we develop so much mucus or we get that tickle in our throat. Our body is in fight, in fight mode or we get a high fever. You get the high fever because your body's fighting. You want that fever. You want to for that to happen, it means that your body is fighting the infection. So it's already designed to do that. And what happens is these essential oils have these components in there that help your body to do that better. They help them to do that better. They help you to fight. They help to bring balance. Um, and so that's what we use them for, not to treat anything and not even to prevent, but to boost the immune system 
and to give you a feeling of protection um, to to fight it to to fight for your mind and your body to fight so that is what we can do so know that as I go through these recipes we are going to be using um, not only aromatherapy and essential oils but we're going to be adding also what we what I know so far that has been recommended from the World Health Health Organization and the CDC. Um, so we are going to be using alcohol, which in, in a lot of times we might not use that in, in aromatherapy blends, but we're going to use that in the in the sanitizer and things like that. Okay. So um, hopefully I've answered the question about what essential oils can do and what they can't do. And next I'm going to um, go into our hand sanitizer and we will talk a little bit more about what's antibacterial, antifungal, antimicrobial, and, and those types of things. All right, that's coming up. All right, everybody, I hope the volume's good for you. I'll test it out later. Um, but what we're gonna do now is make the aloe vera gel. Now, if you, um, you should see the little video. I, I'm gonna try to add a video here that shows me going to get pick this up for my friend. Um, so if you have fresh aloe, this is how you make it. If you don't have fresh aloe, um, just get an aloe vera gel, uh, organic from your store, your local store or Amazon or wherever you get it is just fine. So i um, just going to show, but since I can get it fresh, why not? Why not? And I just wanted to show you this portion. So um, while I prepare this, um, if you already have your aloe vera gel, what we're going to be doing is a 60-40 uh, blend of aloe and alcohol. So 60% um, percent of, your, um, of your blend is going to be uh, a 91% or above uh, isopropyl alcohol because that's what's recommended for protection against um, this virus and really any, I mean, cold and flu season. So if you're watching this and hopefully we're out of the scary part for coronavirus, we might be dealing with another virus or it may just be cold and flu season, this would still be great. And then at that point you can decide if you want to put in the um, alcohol or not. But for this, since that is what's been highly re recommended from the CDC, we're gonna use the alcohol, okay? All right, so just putting this in this. And I have a Vitamix, so you can definitely use a Vitamix if you have it, or just a, um, what is this other thing I have over here? <laughs> Any blender, it's not difficult to blend. I really want to liquefy it and let's see, I'm trying to get this, all the pieces in there. And, um, but yeah, if you're just using, you know, you go ahead and take your um, gel and fill up your, your container, whatever you're using. I'm going to be using a two ounce bottle then you can just go ahead and get your gel ready and go ahead and put 40%, fill that bottle at about 40, 39, because the oils are not gonna take up that much space. But if you're gonna be technical, we can say 39% of the space is gonna be your aloe gel. And you can see this is pretty easy. I'm literally just taking out the clear stuff. Now the green parts might be useful for something, I don't know. So, some of you out there know, what do you use this green part for? And I am um, trying not to stick myself in the meantime. Nice to have a nice sharp knife with this. All right, so, um, when it comes to the essential oil, we're going to be putting, because we're using, well here's the percentage. You want to use one to two percent. So what that means is, you see that goopy, goopy, goopy. This is great in a smoothie too, you guys. Well, it's super bitter, but it's good if you have gut issues. It's good for your immune system, and we need all of that good stuff right now, right? 
Um, but okay, getting back to percentages. So, and you should see this on your screen at some point. You're gonna use one to 2%. Now, if you're using this on young children, on elderly or someone with chronic illness and that's taking a lot of medication, you may wanna do the 1% with them. Um, and for all of us, a 2% blend is gonna be, it's gonna be good. And sometimes we think, oh my goodness, I, you know, this is serious. I'm gonna pile on as many oils as I possibly can. But the truth is you really don't need to do that. Uh, more is not better. When it comes to aromatherapy, there are times in acute cases where I may say, oh, don't, you know, you don't need to use a carrier or anything, put this directly on. Or I might say, make it at a higher percentage if you're gonna be using it for a short amount of time. But see, these soaps and sanitizers, we're gonna be using all day long. You guys see that? Yay, grossy, grossy. I almost remind you of okra, right? <laughs> so we're gonna be using this stuff all day, every day, and 2% is perfect. So in a two ounce bottle, give me one second. In a two, let me wait before I say that. <laughs> In a two ounce bottle, we're going for 22 to 24 drops total of oils. Um, and in, um, so like, yeah, it goes like that. So if you're doing a one ounce bottle, we're looking at 10 drops, 10 to 12 drops, three ounce bottle, it's gonna be 32 to um, 34 drops like that. So you can use whatever size bottle you want. You can use a spritzer bottle if you have a cap. The ones I'm making with just has, has a screw on cap. But if you have one with a sprayer, you can make it in that. Um, that's great and convenient. You can do it either way. All right, so now I'm gonna just blend this and then we will put together the blend. So this is just an, a basic little ninja. And you'll see, let me see if I, well, you guys know how to use a ninja. I, I can't get that. and blended and that's it and so that's what we're going to put in our blend so next we'll do that blend together okay so now let's put all our pieces together and like I said I'm just going to use that's a two ounce bottle with a cap but if you have one with a sprayer like this that's really nice and easy to spray in your hand or if you want to use a four ounce bottle like use one of your old hydrosol bottles you can do that and put that in there those are fine you can have the top with the, the dropper that's great too. Um, those are probably even better because especially if more than one person is gonna use it so you, you're not touching your hand with it. Versus with this, I'm probably gonna be pouring like that and it's possible somebody could put their hand on it. So it's a good idea if you can use some of those um, other options. All right, let me just make sure my microphone is close enough for you guys. I know that was one of the issues with the other video, okay. Alrighty, let's put these together and this is our hand sanitizer that we're doing. Great if you can have one of these little filters. If you don't, find something so that you don't make a big giant mess like I would do. So that's just the aloe that I blended. It's kind of settling now and making its own little gel. And you're 100% fine if you just find some organic aloe vera somewhere, um, Amazon, health food store or wherever you can get it okay so i uh, try to do this where you can see and i see a little bit in there so that's going to take a minute to to drain in can you see how that's kind of going in <laughs> i know it doesn't look as so pleasant that is an all natural aloe now, if you're really good, it's if you, and you want to measure, that's a good thing. <laughs> I don't measure. I look for you know the percentages on on my bottle, and I can just kind of eye it. But measuring is always better. That's a bad example of a teacher saying, "Do as I say, not as I do." Uh, so I want to put a little bit more in there because I'm looking at percentage again. We want sixty forty. All right, okay. 
Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is put in the alcohol. Now, here is a thing with the alcohol. You want this to say 91, because I believe that's what is at the time of this recording, um, the last I saw, I think that's what the, the CDC was saying. You want something, you want a hand sanitizer that has 60% of a 91% um, isopropyl alcohol. This is only 70%, and that's just what we have here. So um, what I found so far. So that's what I'm gonna use. But look for 91%. I'm doing it again, do as I say, right? But you, you, you do the best you can. If you happen to be living in an area and you don't, you haven't had gotten get your hands on it yet, then you, you do that. So you see, yeah. So I'm just about filling that up because the essential oils are not gonna take up that much space. So I probably could have put in just a little less, like right when it gets to what I call the shoulder right there. And you see the alcohol makes it nice, like it's it's blending in there really nice and you can kind of see the aloe. And so you're just gonna give that a nice little shake when you're ready to use it. And you're gonna be good to go. So now let's put our oils in. And you should see the ingredients on your screen. And we're doing eight drops of thieves. And let me talk to you about thieves while I gather the thieves. Did I take it in the other room? No, it's right here. All right, so thieves is a blend of essential oils. Now you can make your own. And so let me tell you what's in it. I wrote that down for you guys. Um, and then I'll, I'll explain a couple of things. So in thieves, it's clove, lemon, cinnamon, eucalyptus, radiata, and rosemary. So you can make a stock blend, meaning you get one of these bottles, essential oil bottles, and you put those ingredients in, in the bottle and that becomes your thieves stock bottle, okay? I, I'm an aromatherapist and I don't mess with it. Thieves, I feel like is a perfect blend. It works beautifully. I don't need to recreate it, so I personally don't do it, but you absolutely can do that. If you have those ingredients, just get you an empty um, essential oil bottle with the orifice reducer, which is just this little cap right there, and put those in. Um, I, I don't know how many drops they put of each one in the Thieves blend. So I would just say put equal parts in it and continue to work with it until you find like, oh, this really, uh, it's really, I love the aroma and it's immune boosting and that type of thing. But I love Thieves, it helps so much. And out of all the, the, the ones I'm gonna give you, so I'm gonna tell you the ingredients here. Thieves, oregano, robinsara, tea tree, frankincense, and lavender. Those are stellar oils like I said, we're gonna go through a section where I talk all about the, the therapeutic properties of each one of these oils um, and some alternates. But if you say to me, Renee, if pick two oils out of that whole list, I would say thieves and oregano are must haves in your house, thieves and oregano. So whether you make your own thieves or you get the actual thieves, it's Oh, it smells so good too. It's you really want to use it for immune boosting properties. So I'm going to talk some general about some of the properties as we go along. And so who knows the story of thieves? The tell about thieves. I'm going to do eight drops and then I'll tell you the story. And if you heard it already, you can fast forward a few seconds. <laughs> But they say what happened with thieves, I believe it was the Spanish flu. I could be telling this wrong, you guys, but I know it was some epidemic. And so it was one of those where people were dying because of this, this thing. And I'm gonna say it was the Spanish flu because I really think that's what it was. Anyway, um, so these group of thieves were going in and stealing stuff. I guess people would be buried with their goods, their silver, their gold, and all these different things. And they were going in and stealing it. When they were caught, the question was like, how, why are you guys not dead? Cause you know, we know that you can't touch dead bodies and, and the thing was spreading, whatever it was really bad and just by touch and they were not getting it. So this is what they say, who knows if this is a true story, but this is what the, the, the um, legend is around thieves. And so they gave this formula. They were like, this is what they were using were these, the oils that I just mentioned to you. And supposedly it's it's what safeguarded them from this thing. So that is the tell all around thieves. I don't know if that's true or not, but what I do know is that when I use it, even just like a tickle coming on, there's a lot of different things that you can do to help. And remember that tickle is just your body's usually telling you, okay, something's coming. Something's coming and you wanna start get started on your routine, whatever it is that, that you do 
I, I will make a throat rub with thieves. I make cough drop, cough um, medicine and drops with thieves. Um, there's a lot of different things that you can start doing. Take vitamin C. Um, I am going to talk to you about some supplements that, that will be great for immune boosting too. I'll do that towards the end too because I'll add that on for you guys. But that's that's what you want to start doing. So anyway, we got eight drops of thieves in our hand sanitizers. Let me get back to the recipe. Um, we are going to do three drops of oregano. And I just have my oregano. What did you guys do with that oregano? Let's see here. I don't see oregano or here, here it is. I was gonna say, I don't see oregano and I don't see the Robinsara. Okay, so oregano. So here I wanna say this oregano and one, two, three. I had to do that first. It almost was three and a half. That was pretty good. I got three in. Um, you guys don't panic if another drop comes in there. You haven't ruined the blend. You're okay. I, you know, we, we're, our goal is 22 to 24 drops. If, if it's a little bit more. You know, they, we're okay. Um, oregano and thieves can be spicy on the skin. So pay attention, especially if you're using this on younger ones, definitely no more than 1% um, because it can sting the skin. And it's because of, in the thieves, the clove and the cinnamon can, can both be skin irritating if it's too much depending on the person and oregano can burn like fire so we want to be really careful with that really try not to get more drops in with the oregano because it, it can really be um, for some folks really burn the skin so you got to be careful with that um, this smells amazing and I've just put in the thieves and the oregano I could eat this <laughs> it smells really good Okay, um, so we got Thieves, Oregano, Robinsara, and I'm not seeing my Robinsara. So here's a good time. Let's see how much I got in it. Here's, Robinsara is what I prefer. Robinsara has got great emotional benefits. We're going to talk about that. But so does Eucalyptus. This is Euc Eucalyptus Radiata, which is already in Thieves. I'm going to put a little bit extra just because I don't want to get up to get my Robinsara. But Robinsara, especially, we want to nourish for this blend. We want to nourish the respiratory system. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get my Robinsara because eucalyptus is really great for the immune system. We know we, we, we know that smell. We think about rubs that we grew up using and that smell of eucalyptus and it just makes us breathe better. We feel so much better. Robinsara is similar because they both have the 1-8 cineol in there, but Robinsara is going to be a little milder and soother on the lungs and the respiratory system. And with this particular virus that's out, we just want to nourish that respiratory system. So give me a second. I am going to walk over to the cabinet. Um, you guys can see my cabinet a little bit there. And let's see if I can't find my actual bottle of Robinsara. Because these are blends that I am actually going to be using myself. And as well as my family and friends. Yes. And I want us to... Um, I want us to have those same benefits. So let's do it. Robinsara. All right. And we were doing, what was it? Three drops of Robinsara? Yeah, three drops. One, two, three. And right away, that got four, and that's okay. <laughs> I love 1 8 Cineol so much. So here are some of the things that have 1 8 Cineol um, Eucalyptus globus, Eucalyptus radiata. Um, Robin Sara, and here's one that you might not ever think has one eight in y'all, cedarwood. Cedarwood is what we prefer when we're dealing with young ones. So if you're gonna make a hand sanitizer for your kids, why don't you go ahead and switch out, um, I would even use less drops of thieves. So let's do a one ounce blend for them. So that's gonna be 10 drops. So for the kids, let's do maybe one to two drops of the thieves, and then um, make that up with the cedarwood. So take out the, or you know what, let's do for the kids, just do one or two drops of the Thieves. Go ahead and put one drop of Robin Sour and then do three drops of the um, uh, Cedarwood because it's got the similar properties and it's milder for the kids. It's also gonna help them to relax. So 
that's always a plus. All right, so frankincense, uh, tea tree was next, tea tree. I love tea tree. So anytime we're talking about um, fungus, virus, bacteria, I'm grabbing for the tea tree. Tea tree, we have a 2012 and a 2004 study that shows um, some good benefits with tea tree and the virus MRSA. So if you want details on that, I can tell you where the studies, I learned this in a room ahead of the school that I went to. So really great studies on that. Very exciting what can be done. And again, it's the constituents that we're, that we're looking at in there in, in the tea tree. It's terpening for all. You can find terpening for all in tea tree, Australian ericofolia, um, sweet marjoram. Those are some of the ones, just some of the ones that have terpening for all. So we can, you can grab and use that for, use it for any of those. So three drops of the tea tree. One, two, three. I got four and I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Um, two drops of frankincense. And I'm adding frankincense because frank frankincense is a powerful immune boost. You're going to get a really powerful immune boost um, with the frankincense. You're also going to get nourishment for your respiratory system and your nervous system. It's very grounding and it's very calming. And during this time, we need that. Because when you have something that could be an epidemic or you have something spreading and something that's co costing lives, we can get anxiety over it. Or either we avoid it and say, oh, I'm going to make jokes about it or I'm not going to think about it or that type of thing. Either one affects us. So we're going to be affected mentally, emotionally, and physically. Rather we avoid it or rather we're panicking. So what we want to do is to be able to face it in, in a peace and grounding. And one of the things that's going to help with that is... Um, things like frankincense that will help to settle the mind okay so we're gonna use two drops of that frankincense is really powerful that we don't need a lot so let's go one two this one um this particular brand is a little thinner than i like frankincense is a resin and it doesn't come out thick but that one is just a little thinner that i like but let's let's give it a smell wow you know what's so interesting this was smelling beautiful Already, but that frankincense, just two drops of it, is kind of taking taking over the aroma. But I'm gonna blend it real good. And then our last one is lavender. So what's beautiful about lavender? Just a simple bottle of lavender is um, linalool is the chemical component in lavender that is so beautiful. You're also gonna find that I believe in cedarwood too. Several essential oils have linalool in it. But linalool can help to reduce the effects of a panic attack, anxiety, um, just fear, and heavy stress. Just the smell of lavender, using it therapeutically. Using it therapeutically means you're inhaling it purposefully for that purpose, thinking about that, using your breathing techniques. It's massaging it on, it's using it in a diffuser, um, or using it in an, in an inhaler or using it actually on your skin so that it gets into your bloodstream. And what's great is the essential oils really do affect the limbic system. So it's getting into your bloodstream, it's affecting your central nervous system, it's affecting and balancing your fight, flight, or freeze, your rest, digest, all the, that just kind of begins to balance out. That's what makes these um, plant-based remedies so powerful because they really can work with your body to help to create some balance and help us fight, right? That's what we're trying to do here. So with lavender, we're gonna use four drops of it because I want all of those properties. It is ex also incredibly immune boosting. One, two, three, four. Um, lavender is um, uh, great for the immune system. Most of my immune blends are gonna contain lavender and it's very skin nourishing. So it's perfect to put in an inhaler and we're gonna use it in our inhaler blend that we're gonna do in a little bit. Um, because of that mucous membrane in there, you want to have something that's nourishing. The same thing in this hand sanitizer. We got alcohol in there. We've got those spicy oils. And having frankincense and lavender in there is really going to balance it out so that it's nice and um, on your skin. All right, so you just give that a shake. Now, you're, if you have purchased your aloe vera gel, it tends to be a little thicker. So this, this is pretty thick. Um, but the gel can sometimes be a little thicker. So you, you may or may not have it be this liquidy. It's okay if it's not. 
So I just want to show you the essential oils didn't take up much room. Let me see. Can you guys see that? Yeah. There we go. And this is just from the sticker that was on there. So we're going to put a new sticker on there that says antibacterial hand sanitizer. Wow, you guys. So this smells so good. It ended up blending very, very well. I love the aroma of this. All right. So I can definitely smell the alcohol really strong but it's softened by the the aroma of the essential oils now if you guys make this and then you feel like ah, the aroma is off for me i really don't like this or that message me and i'll we'll play around with what we can use so i don't want to touch this in my skin so what i'm going to do like i said you can put a little sprayer in there but what i'm going to do is just pour a little in a cap so i want to show you and see how it's going to apply on the skin it's going to be pretty liquidy that alcohol clean hands clean hands yes all right so that's our hand sanitizer now if some of you have like the little one ounce hand purifiers like with the thieves the thieves hand, hand purifier what I would do and I'm gonna go ahead and do this now you're talking about something that smells amazing I love this but to be compliant um, I'm gonna add alcohol to it so that's something that you may want to do if you have your little these hand purifier that you keep in your purse, both of these are gonna go in my purse. I just wanna be compliant and add alcohol because it's not made with alcohol as far as I know. All right, so there we go. We've got us a couple of nice hand sanitizers that I can carry and be out and about and feel good. Now, if you're in, in the um, higher risk areas or um, higher risk groups you're 60 or over you have a chronic illness or a young one you want to if, and if you're being told not to go out then don't let this say hey renee said we can just beef up on this stuff and go out and about no you want to stick to what you're being advised i'm just saying when you are out and about when you do make a decision to go out then that's something you can use you can also use these if you guys decide to travel this is something you can wipe down your area with. So you can wipe down the plane seat. Me personally, I won't be flying until for a good while. Um, but if, if an emergency came up and I had to, um, or um, whatever reason, I'm, I'm in a crowd and I'm going to be somewhere where I can't control what's around, this is a great thing to spray in the air. I can have a sprayer and spray it in my surrounding area. And I can also wipe down my seats with it. Okay, so that's something that you can keep in mind. All right, so the next thing we're going to make is going to be a hand soap. So I'll be right back to do that. All right, next up we're doing our hand soap. So to make this easy, we're gonna use the same ingredients in all of these, pretty much. And um, just so you're not having to get a lot of extra stuff. But now if you want, again, some, some alternatives, then just let me know and I can get those for you. Thank you for letting me just take a little drink there. These things make you thirsty. Okay, I'm gonna do the hand soap in this spritzer. Now, if you watch the one on Facebook, we did it in a in a bottle, but I want to do a spritzer. So this is a hydrosol bottle. This is frankincense hydrosol. You can probably get these on Amazon. I got this particular one from Aromatics International. Um, you know, you can get them in various places. I'm actually going to take this label off because I want you to see the measurements. I mean, not the measurements, but the, <laughs> the lines on the bottle, like where I'm filling this up. So this still has some frankincense hydrosol in it, and I'm just going to add to it. Now, the reason I want to use a hydrosol, so for those who don't know what a hydrosol is, a hydrosol is made during the process that essential oils are made. So during that process, um, I just want to side note, you're going to see me adding some aloe vera in here. I had, This is the one I made on Facebook. So you guys who had seen the Facebook one, you remember I didn't have my gel. So while I'm talking, I'm just going to fill this up real quick. Um, so getting back to the hydrosol. It's made in the process. So it's the water that happens when the um, essential oils are extracted. It is um, a beautiful, we call it a plant medicinal water. I fill that up too much. That's what happens when you try to talk and do this at the same time. 
I told you to see how gross it looks. Oh gosh, I couldn't get it where you could see. Oh goodness, and then I just dropped it. Loopy, loopy, loopy. All right. Suck. Two same hand sanitizers. All right. So that's what the hydrosol is. The reason I want to use it in the hand soap is a couple of things. Frankincense, again, is very gentle on the skin. It's really nourishing to the skin. It's nourishing to the respiratory system. It's nourishing to your whole um, uh, system. It has the same properties as frankincense, um, very similar properties, I should say. And so you're just going to get all that nourishment. You're going to get the immune boost. You're going to get the grounding from it. You're going to get all of that. And it's really easy on children. So you can definitely use this, the hydrosol, um, for young ones too. But I want something in the soap that's going to be a little bit more nourishing. So this hand soap is going to be very skin nourishing as well as antibacterial, antifungal, um, and antimicrobial because of the oils. I'm not going to put alcohol in the soap just because I want to nourish it and we have the soap itself for the cleansing portion. All right. I'm using Castile soap. So you see how much frankincense, the hydrosol is in there, right? And pretty much... We're going to fill this up quite a bit with soap, and I lost my funnel there. I have another one, but let's see. Let's see if I can get this in without the funnel. If not, we'll go grab it. So this is Castile soap. I use a lot of different brands of Castile soap. As long as it's um, your the ideal, you want to get an organic, you know, Castile soap if you can. Um, and I'm going to fill this up almost to the ridge. And then what I'm going to do is actually put an oil in it, uh, a carrier oil. So I need to sit this down, you guys, but you get the idea. I'm pouring this in, but I just don't want to make a mess. So yeah, this is pouring a lot easier now than me holding it up. And then I'll show you the measurement when I'm done. Okay. Yeah. So we had that much of hydrosol. So it's kind of like a 60-40 again, 40%. And then the soap, you want more soap. And I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there for the nourishment. This is gonna feel amazing on your skin. You're, we're washing our hands so much right now, and rightly so. Um, it's just gonna be very, very yummy on the skin. So I'm gonna lay this down again and just then I'll let you guys see. You're really going to enjoy this. Okay, so you see where that is? I'm going to put just a tiny bit more. I really want this to um, sink into the skin and make it plump. So avocado oil would be really nice, and I love olive oil. You can use coconut oil, jojoba oil. All of those are really great on the skin. And then... I'm going to put my essential oils in and I'm going to top it off with some more soap. Because remember, the essential oils aren't going to take that much space. Now, we are now dealing with a four ounce bottle. I'm just going to triple check that, but I'm pretty sure these are four ounces. Why do I take my glasses off, you guys? Because I can't see when I do, when I'm looking at you guys. Um, 3.4. It's 3.4 ounces. Okay, so we're going for about the same thing. So I, I'm gonna do about 35 drops around about, okay, in this, in, the, in this. All right, so let's get going. I do wanna use oregano, but very little. So I'm gonna put three drops of the oregano. There we go. Three drops of oregano. Getting my spice rings in there and out of the way. We're gonna do five of thieves. Just because I believe so much in its um, it's got such a strong antimicrobial, viral, antiviral, antibacterial, and I really want that in there. Tea tree, same thing, five of that. Six popped in there. All right, we're gonna go for the Robin Sara. Let's do five of that. What do we have, you guys? About eighteen. 
Um, and then we're gonna do some lavender. Let's do five of that too. Yeah, I've got six in there. So we've got about 20, so now we have about 10 drops to kind of play around with. I'm gonna do two of the frankincense. We already have the hydrosol, but I want the oil in there too. And you know what, what we can do here? Um, from here, I feel like we're covered right now when it comes to antibacterial, antimicrobial, antiviral effect. We've got our soap in there. It's gonna be nice and sudsy. So what I would do here, um, what you guys can do too, is shake this up and smell it. And then think about, um, and this is a blending, this is a blending technique. So we learn chemistry so that we know how to blend, but another thing that you, that you wanna use when it comes to blending it's just intuitive blending. It's like, you know, I really feel for this, or I really feel for that. I really want this or that in, in the blend. And you'll feel that with the smell. It's like, oh, I would love the aroma to be a little bit more sweet, a little bit more spicy. And as you get to learn your oils, you'll know like, oh gosh, I would really love it to be topped off with this or that. Um, another thing you can think about, let me give this a smell. So this right now is strong hydrosol. I smell a lot of frankincense and I really want to cut that. It's good because we have about um, 10 more drops we can put in, right? I believe it's 10 more drops, but the exact amount you'll see on your screen because I'll, I'll make sure that I put the exact amount that we have, what it should be. I'll, t I'll type that up on the screen. I think we have about 10 drops. And I really want a spicier smell this is really really sweet right now and i'm going to add eucalyptus to it because I, i'm looking after the immune, the respiratory system and i actually put like almost 10 drops of that in there let's give it another smell and then if i'm still not liking the smell what i'm going to do is add some citrus because the citrus is also strong with the D-limonene, so it's gonna help with the immune system. Uh, anything with D-limonene activates the white blood cells, which is gonna help fight infection. So um, that's gonna be limit. We already have that in the thieves, but the D-limonene, we've got some D-limonene in there. That's better. That's better, but I want more. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna add oregano. Because remember, we only put a couple of drops in there. I particularly do like oregano. Let me count this out. One, two, three. But I really do drop by drop when it comes to oregano because I don't want it to burn my skin. I have experienced that and it is not nice. So you don't want that. A lot of times I like a floral scent in my soaps. But right now, mentally and emotionally, I want something that smells strong and kind of medicinal. So that's what I'm going for. So I'm putting more thieves in there. And I'm totally just going for aroma now, you guys. Yeah, that's really more like what I like. I really love that. And so you guys can play with it and I can help you. You just let me know how yours is smelling. I love that. And what I would probably recommend is maybe, oh, that's good. You can mix your hydrosol too. So if that was, that was probably too much of the frankincense hydrosol. So just from my particular um, taste, what, what I also like, I love the peppermint hydrosol and I love the ginger hydrosol. So you, maybe you could mix that up. So here we go. And I'm going to, so you guys know how to wash, right? We should wet our hands first, but I just want you to see how this comes out. Yeah. Ooh, it's really soapy. I smell that the Castile soap really good. So I'm gonna add some water so you guys can really see. Okay, you guys, I'm back. I'm in the bathroom, so it's kind of harder. So I sprayed a good amount in there, wet my hands. And I just want you to see how nice and soapy this gets. Okay. So we're doing 20 seconds. And can I just tell you this smells amazing? <laughs> 
it's lighting up my bathroom, but it's not like a sickening smell. It is sweet and spicy, and it's so nourishing to my skin. All right, so I'm just going to rinse that off. Dry real good the way we're supposed to. There you go. Okay, we're on our last item to make together. And that is the, I'm just checking my, that is the inhaler. So these are the pieces to your inhaler. Now, as I do the inhaler, um, I guess I'll shoot, let me show you this too, because some of you have a roller. Um, I really like the inhalers. Either one is fine. You're going to put about the same amount of oil, so about 10 to 12 drops. The difference is if you use this, you're going to put in a carrier oil. So you're going to fill up your carrier oil to about right here, and then you're going to put 10 to 12 drops of the oils. With this, there's no carrier. You're just soaking this cotton wick with the, the 10 to 12 drops of oils, okay? So I'm just putting it in this cup. Drop the cotton wick in there. Um, and I get these from Amazon. You can get them from Amazon. I've gotten some from Aromatics International. Anywhere you can get those. You just want to make sure that the cotton wick is organic. That part is important. Okay, so when we're thinking about the inhaler, we want to do a couple of things. We want to boost the immune system. We want it to really kick into gear. So we're gonna be looking for delimiting for that to activate that white blood cell. We're gonna be looking for antimicrobial, antibacterial, antibacterial, uh, antifungal. And all the oils that we've used today have all of that. So we're gonna pick from some of those same oils. And then I'm gonna add one that also is high in delimiting, bergamot. So um, you guys have heard me talk a lot about bergamot. Um, still have some bergamot. I should still have bergamot. I try to keep bergamot around because it's a beautiful, beautiful oil. Yes, I have some. Um, I'm going to talk about this one too. So a couple of things with this. This immune support blend is going to do a couple of things. It's going to be helping to boost the immune system but I also want it to be and to encourage healing emotionally, some grounding, some balance. Um, and you can use this five times a day. Um, you can use it throughout the day and I would encourage you to use it throughout the day. We're using a number of drops that's not gonna be overwhelming. What you wanna be thinking about when you make your blend is the aromas out of all the, the ones that we're using, you wanna think about the aromas that you particularly like. So some people can't deal with the sweet smell and make them nauseous. Um, some can't have it to be too spicy, the, the, the eucalyptus um, in the thieves, because remember eucalyptus, uh, thieves has eucalyptus, and then we had some other eucalyptus right out of that we added to that too. You want to think about whether or not that's going to be strong for you. You want to think about if you like the aroma of frankincense. So the aromas that you enjoy is very important to this blend. So think about, have a smell of your oils before you make this inhaler. Because this is going to be your little buddy. Like you're going to use this throughout the day to strengthen your body and your mind. We're going to make them do both because we're, going to, we're using items that have nourishment for your lungs, for your immune system, for your, um, your limbic system, your central nervous system. Okay. Um, so think about the aromas. And then the next thing you're going to think about is your mucous membrane. So because we're gonna be inhaling this, putting that directly in there, we want to make sure that we're not heavy handed on like peppermint or oregano. Cause some people, they don't make a blend without putting peppermint in it. And I understand I love peppermint, but you gotta be, if you do that, don't do it in a children's blend at all. But if you do it on your blend or an adult blend, don't put more than one drop really and truly. It can, it can really irritate that mucous membrane. Same thing with thieves, not more than one or two drops. I am gonna put some thieves in here. 
and a back let's start with thieves so we're gonna put two drops of thieves remember we're going for 10 to 10 to 12 drops I'm gonna do 10 first that came out about two and a half and let me see if I can get you to see it oh it's so hard to see that uh, it's rolling around in there can you guys see that the way the light is hitting here we go so I just pour it right on top and then we're gonna stir it around and we just washed our hands but yes make sure your hands are clean the reason I'm adding bergamot is because bergamot is known to be very nourishing to the emotions. Antidepressant and anti-anxiety, bergamot is known for that. So it's, it's heavy in D-limonene, but it's got other constituents in there too that will help with that. So, and it's, it's, it's great when you're inhaling it. Bergamot, you have to be careful if it's going on your skin because it can be phototoxic. But inhaling it, you're good. Um, and so I did two drops of the thieves. So I'm going to do three of bergamot because I'm getting immune support with that. So, and I know it's going to be helping emotionally. So we got three, we got five drops so far. Let's put five more in before we give it a little smell and that will, way we'll know how to top it up. Um, always, okay, always lavender. Let me make sure we start recording yet. Yeah. Um, is going to be nice when we're talking about nourishing the skin because it is cicatricent, meaning it, it's skin healing. It, it, so that one in frankincense, helichrysum, all of those are actually going to be healing to the skin. And that's a good thing when we're mixing it with some of these spicier oils and also because it's going so often in that mucous membrane. But for me, lavender can be overpowering for me. The sweetness of it even though it's got that woodsy in there too so i'm only going to put two drops and i feel like it's all that i need okay because it's going to give me um some balancing emotionally immune support and all that so let's see how many drops do we have you'll have it exact on your screen but i believe we have um doo -doo 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 -doo. let me not spend too much time on that because it's going to be on your screen Okay, so uh, I'm not going to put frankincense. I am going to put Robinsara because I love the aroma of Robinsara. So I'm going to put about three drops in there. All right, and now I'm going to swirl it around. Now, normally, if I'm making this for a client, I'm going to use tweezers or something like that just because you don't, this is going in their nose. They just don't want your hands on it. That's just it. But you guys are making this for yourselves. Uh, and I may have some other aromatherapists in here. So if you guys are making it for clients, yeah, use tweezers. I'm just using a little dropper top because um, this is mine. I'll be using this. Um, and this is something you don't want to share even with family members. Everybody gets their own inhaler. So put your names on it and all that kind of thing. I can already tell I love the aroma, but let's give it a smell. I'll have no trouble inhaling this all day. At first, I thought it was going to be too much 1 8 Cineol just from the rub and sour. That does not need a thing. That does not need one single thing. So, I'm not going to put anything else in it. Um, and you guys let me know how yours is smelling. So, you just pop that in. You put the top on. Make sure it clicks. Did you hear that? It clicked. And you're done. Now you take this part out and inhale. Oh, this, I love it so much. I love my job. I really do. This is beautiful. Happiness. Happiness. You're going to feel happy. You're going to feel excited about life. It's going to calm fears and anxieties. And you are definitely doing some special stuff for your immune system. The last thing is you want to make sure that you go ahead and label these. So I promise you guys, as soon as I get off, I'm going to put labels on. <laughs> Some of you are probably laughing right now. If you're my clients or my friends that are watching this, you know I forget to put labels on all the time and it drives me insane. And I have to smell it and try to see which one was this. So put your label on as quickly as possible. You can get those from Amazon too. We're done. We are done. So what I'm going to do now, I promised you I would tell you some of the chemical components and stuff. So I'm going to go through my list. So for those of you who want to hang out to hear the sciencey stuff, that's what we're going to go over now. Um, and I'll go down the list of some of the notes that I took. So let's start with clove. 
This clove is one of the ingredients in thieves. Now, clove is a great one to add. Like say for instance, you don't have thieves and you're looking for something for immune boosting. This is a really good one. So you can just go ahead and, I got stuff hanging in my hair. Um, you can add clove. Clove is another thing that I use for like um, cough syrups and things like that. So it's antibacterial, antimicrobial, especially when blended with, with rosemary and lavender. So that's what studies have shown it has an, uh, an additional effect when it's blended with rosemary and lavender. In Thieves, you're getting the rosemary in Thieves, and in the blends that we did, you're getting the lavender, so you're covered. Lemon, lemon is also in Thieves, and you can also use lemon for, like when you do your smell test, and if it's not, if it's smelling too sweet, or it's just not giving the aroma that it wants, lemon is something that you can add. You're gonna get extra support by using the lemon. Okay, so it's it's high in D-limonene, so it's the same things like with the bergamot. Um, antibacterial, antiviral, it's activating the white blood cells, so you're fighting infection. It's immuno, immunostimulant, right? Um, rosemary, rosemary um, is also in, in thieves. The great thing about rosemary is it also contains 1,8-cineol. You want to get one, not all of them, so you want to get one that's one eight, a 1,8-cineol 8 8 rosemary. 1,8-cineol is the same thing that you're also getting from your eucalyptus, your um, robinsara, your cedarwood. It's in all of those. And 1,8-cineol is responsible for a lot of that antiviral, antimicrobial, so that's why you hear the same things over and over of the ones that have it. Also antifungal, and here's the other thing about um, anti with, with this is with 1,8-cineol is that it also um, is an expectorant. So this is really important when we're talking about nourishing the respiratory system and the lungs and things like that, okay? Robin Sara, again, with the 1,8-cineol, we're having the same thing. Um, it's an airborne antimicrobial, antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal immunostimulant, and it's known to reduce um, feelings of fear and anxiety, stress, and soothe anxiety. So all of that is, it does. Tea tree. Tea, tea tree is also an airborne microbial. I told you about the study we had in 2004 and 2012 where it was studied against MRSA and did well. Um, so you can ask me if you want details on that. It is antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral. It's immunostimulant. And it also has a calming effect. Did you know that about tea tree? That it has a calming effect. I really love that. Frankincense, high in the constituent or component alpha pinene, strong immunostimulant, grounding, encourages um, emotional healing. So this is a great one to use, especially if you're if somebody in the house is sick, maybe they've gotten the virus, maybe they um, um, have some symptoms and they're not sure and they're really getting anxious. As you guys think through your next steps or as you're waiting to hear from your healthcare provider, frankincense is a great one to add for that purpose. So I just wanted to give you those things. Oh, I, I missed one, lavender. We didn't go over those details. Lavender antiviral, antifungal, immunostimulant. It reduces anxiety, um, calms, and can reduce symptoms of a panic attack. So it's been known to do that. So these are the oils. Here are some um, replacements that I'm gonna to talk to you about a little bit. Um, so if you didn't wanna use the thieves, you could have clove, you can have any of those items that are in there, clove or rosemary top. Um, the ones I would not, replace would be like i said thieves and oregano are the ones i really would not replace but if you want to and you're like you know maybe you're allergic to oregano or something like that thyme or rosemary you can replace um for tea tree maybe you don't have it maybe you don't like the aroma uh sweet marjoram australia australian erectifolia are some options or anything that's got terpenine for all um for lavender, some people don't like the smell of lavender. Use more of the frankincense, you can do that. You can also use cedarwood. You can use uh, basil, oddly enough. Um, the aroma is completely different. It's got similar constituents, so you could use those to replace. If you want more replacement options, let me know, and I will help you with that. 
So I hope that this was really helpful and informative. I hope you guys enjoy it. Those of you who are watching it um, publicly, you have 72 hours from the date it was posted. So you have to take a look to see when this was actually posted. It'll be removed 72 hours from there. Those of you who are program members, it's going to be in your teachable classroom from now on. All right. Um, enjoy. Ask me questions. Love you much. Bye-bye. Okay, so I neglected to um, give you your um, supplements. I wanted to add this little piece in. So here are some supplements that um, my family and I take. This is I recommend these for my clients. Uh, Echinacea, especially with Golden Seal, is really great. I get a, one on Amazon um, that I love, and oh, I can't think of the name of it right now. I'll post that for you guys. Um, but if you look for echinacea with golden seal, you want the drops, you want liquid, same thing with elderberry, um, the liquid would be great. Um, and I, echinacea is the one I have the most experience with and it works really quickly. Um, I'm hearing from clients and friends that elderberry works really well. I've just started to use that, but so far my biggest, um, benefit comes from echinacea. Um, Dr. Schultz also has a wonderful echinacea that works really quickly. He also has a throat and tonsil spray. You guys might want to take a look at um, that's really protective and supportive, especially when you get that tickle in your throat. Uh, vitamin C. Look for a vitamin C um, that's got cherries. And I know Dr. Schultz has one like that, and so does Young Living. They both have um, something that's called like Super C, and it's got with the, the cherries, and you, that's the, the preferred one. Um, and then probiotics. So get a good... Um, strand of, of probiotic that you can take. I like the ones that are refrigerated. Um, you don't have to have those. There, there are others that can would stay in not being in the refrigerator. But for some reason, I always feel like I'm getting better benefit when I have that. Of course, Young Living has the Life 9 that I really love. Um, but there are several out there that have um, good, strong strain of, of um, bacteria, the good bacteria. And that's also a really good benefit for your immune system. You want to keep your gut healthy. It's very, very important for the immune system. So I wanted to make sure that was added on. All right. Enjoy.